Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but it is a great, great day to be alive. We're going through a lot of things, but all I know is this. All things work together for good for those who love God and called according to his purposes. Do you believe that? I believe that uh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. I believe that God is setting things up so that he can pour out of his spirit, so he can slap the devil up the side of the head, amen, kick him in the butt, do a few things like that, and build his church like he said he would. He said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, you and I, we've got, a, we've got a choice. We can either get all bamboozled and all miserable and all upset and things like that. And in the natural, if you look in the natural, you will get upset. You will, all those things will happen. But we've got to look into the realm of the spirit. We've got to look beyond what we see in the natural. We've got to look to a higher level. And we've got to see that God is not up there pulling his hair out. He's quite happy. He's quite content. He knows what he can do. He knows the power. And, uh, and I believe we're going to see an amazing, amazing move of God. Can you imagine that right now, as the world and all the, of course, all the media, all they're talking about is the catastrophe, the, the trouble that's going on in Afghanistan. But underneath all that, the Spirit of God is moving. People are getting born again. People are getting touched. There's visions, dreams. It's amazing. God's building His church in that environment. I don't know about you, but I believe that that can happen in Australia. I believe it, and I, and I totally agree with Tom, that it would be wonderful if there's a bunch of people that don't have to wait for a calamity to come before they cry out to God, that would just want God because He's God. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want God because He's God. I want uh, what I know about my Savior, what He's done for me. Tom was talking about at communion there, that how he hung upon that cross and the ultimate, the, that when he, when he said, Father, forgive them. Man, that, 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 is, that, that speaks to my heart. I don't know about your heart. Does it speak to your heart? So what I want to speak about today is because we're, we're humans and because we're natural, I want to speak again. I spoke a little bit about it last time I spoke, about building the inner man, the inner man, the real you, the inner man. And uh, it says here, it says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. See, you, in, in the natural, people look at me, and, and you know, I'm, 82, I'm 81, nearly 82, and people say, you know, you silly old goat, you're, you're still trying to pastor a church. What are you doing? Why? Why is, you see, my outward man is perishing. You don't have to, you know, I look in the mirror. <laughs> I, I, I know that. I, I, I look at that. There's more things hanging out than, than used to. You know what I mean? I've got sunken treasures and things. But, 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 but you know, there, there, there's, there's an outward man that's, that's perishing. And if all I want to look at is that outward man that's perishing, I'll say, oh, Neil, you're getting old. Oh, Neil, you need to do this. Neil, you need to take it easy. Neil, you need to do this. You need to do that. And before you know where you are, you're right, right out of the will of God. You're so far away from God's purpose and God's plan for your life, you, you're, you can't even find out how to get back. But I choose, amen? I, 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 I'm, I'm going to tell you that. I choose that i got an inward man, hallelujah, that's being renewed day by day. And I want to tell you, this inward man says, don't quit, don't run, don't run away. Keep on going. Keep on moving. Come on. I'm going to build an army around you. We're already starting to see an army of young people starting to build around us. We're starting to see people picking up the banner, people there with visions. Joe, he's only 88. Glory to God. And, and he's got a vision now to start house meetings. And, and things are going to start to happen if you hang on, if you don't lose heart. There's an outward man that is perishing, but there's an inward man and that inward man says, praise the Lord. He says, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. And, 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 he's, and he's doing great things. It says, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment is working for us a far more, more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why? While we do not look at the things which are seen,
If I have, if I have a toffee and I bite into it, my gums keep going up and down, but my teeth stay still. <laughs> <laughs> my, my teeth are like the stars they come out at night <laughs> if we look at the things that are natural <laughs> don't look at me like that <laughs> or we don't look at the things which are seen But these things which are seen, are, are, they're just temporary. But we look at the things that are not seen that are eternal, amen. See, we look at the power of God, we look at the anointing, we look at the victory of the cross. We look at everything that God's done. So I, I believe that it's got very little to do with the natural, but it's got everything to do with the, the mighty power of God, the mighty Holy Spirit, the anointing, the victory of the cross, and everything that God has done for us. So, Father, today I pray that we would concentrate on this building the inner man. Don't allow the enemy to come in. We want to be aware of his cunning devices. We want to be aware of, of, of his actions and what he does to try to stop us from becoming what God wants us to become for him, what Jesus paid the price for. He paid the uh, price for a glorious church, a church powerful. He sent the mighty Holy Ghost. So, Father, we want to identify with who we are. We are, we are more than conquerors. We are a new creation. We're a, we're a spirit being. And, Lord, I pray that our spirit men would, uh, man and a spirit on the inside would begin to control us and rise up within us and speak to us. And, and, and Lord, just like you've spoken to Joe, and while they're sitting there meditating, say, come on, let's start a house meeting. Let's do something. Joe, why don't you just sit down and lay down and die? Silly old goat. No. <laughs> no, amen. No, hallelujah. I want to tell you, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be powerful, amen. The anointing of God's going to flow. People will be healed. People will be set free. I believe that others are going to rise up too. We'll have youth meetings like that. We'll have other people rising up. If God's speaking to you and starts stirring you up, come and see us. So that we can see what we can do to help to build something for the kingdom. Amen. You see, your greatest enemy that you have is not the devil, it's doubt. When you doubt, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to do that. I want to tell you, friends, that the enemy comes in and, and just pours that junk in you. A couple of weeks ago, I preached about, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. How many people really want God to stir you up? Amen. Go lift up your hands if you want God to stir you up. Come on. God, stir me up. Help my unbelief. Father, in Jesus' name, see our hands. Go on, give him a wave. Wave to him. Say, Lord, here I am. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me to see you in all your glory and all your power. Lord, let the, let the power of God flow through me in Jesus' name. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Amen. Demons will tremble at the name of Jesus. See, our greatest enemy is unbelief. It's doubt. You know, Christianity has become uh, a lot of phrases. We call them doctrines. We have a lot of doctrines. Our doctrines have to become a reality to us. It's no good just saying things and mouthing things. Doctrines are good. They're very, very good. But, but if they're only something that we say. I, I've said it before, you know, we... we, we, we uh, we say those, uh, that, that saying, God is good, and people say, all the time. And, and, and it's, it, it most surely means very, very little to the person saying it. There's got to be evidence in our life, amen. I, I remember going at a wedding there, and this, this gentleman came through, and he's like, he'd been, he's been saved a, a hundred years, I think, this bloke. He walked through there, and, and that, he's walking through, and I shook him by the hand. I said, oh, God bless you, sir. He said, he does, he does, he does. <laughs> no evidence. Just phrases. Doctrines have got to become real to us. If our doctrine's not real, it's as useless as an ashtray on a motorcycle. As useless as 
I see somebody wearing one, so I'm not going to say it. As masks against the coronavirus. <laughs> see, if the enemy can bring doubt into us, we will be unsure and we will struggle in our Christian walk. There's too many Christians struggling in their Christian walk because they don't know what they believe. They don't know what, what's going on. Yeah, they, they say this and they have doctrines and philosophies and traditions, but there's no reality in them. Everything Jesus says has got to become real to us. If it's not real to us, it's dead. Jesus is our perfect example. And I can't, every, as soon as I say that, I see Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We, we see things there about people. Jesus, Jesus faced the dead Lazarus as calmly as you and I would come against any ordinary event, any ordinary thing. He didn't have panic attacks. He didn't allow offenses to get at him. He didn't, he didn't allow things to, to get inside him. He was perfectly at peace in the middle of a storm when the, when the ship was being filled with water and when, when waves were come beating the boat. He, he was asleep on the pillow. He, he didn't panic. He, he, he just knew what he had. He knew who he was. See, Christianity, we have to know who we are. We've got to know what we've got. We've got to know that the greater one dwells within us. We've got to know. We've got to know. We've got to know. You see, life, Christian walk, is full of choices. Is it easy for Tom to, to, to just say some of the things that he said this morning where, where he's got to choose something there, not, not to carry the, the, the hurt or the pain, has anybody here ever had hurt or pain? And has anybody here ever carried it for too long? And it, and it just brings you down. It pulls you down. But you see, life, Christianity, like everything else, is a, is a choice. You've got to choose. I choose freedom. You've got, you've got to choose something. You, I, I choose peace. Jesus was at peace. And with this coronavirus and everything like that, and I understand that, that people are dying, and I understand but people die from the flu. People die from a lot of things. It's not the coronavirus as such, but the fear of it or whatever it might be where the enemy, yeah, but it brings, a, it, it, it brings fear upon our lives. Like the, 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 the disciples in the boat, the boat was filling, and what were they? They were full of fear. That's what Jesus said to him. He said, how come you're so fearful and you have no faith? How come? How come? How come? And so you've got to choose peace in the storm. And, you know, the coronavirus or whatever it might be, well, we, we've still got to live. I, to be totally honest with you, it hasn't really made a much difference in my life. I've, I've, I don't know what I've done differently. If they say you've got to lock down, well, you lock down, or you can't go here, you can't go there, that's fair enough. But it doesn't, you know, you've got, to, you've got to choose peace. Jesus walked on a raging sea like you and I would walk the dog in the park. He wanted to go out to see the boys, so he just walked on the water and walked out. Hey, hey, hey boys, they, they, what, what happened to the boys? They became fearful. Fear will grip our heart. Fear can, can get a, a, and hurt us. You see, he knew who he was and what God had made available to him. What God has given us. And God's given you and I, <clears throat> pardon me, God's given you and I so much weaponry He's done so much for us. The cross of Calvary. The cross where, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, amen. Where God came into our lives and, and changed us. You see, for example, 
We've got to understand redemption. I am redeemed. Are you redeemed this morning? Give me a wave if you're redeemed. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am redeemed, and I know I am. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You see, do you know you're redeemed? Do you know it? All my sins are taken away. <laughs> we sing the song. We sing, we say a lot of things, and they become like a doctrine. But has it become a reality to you? In John 1.29, uh, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus took away the sin of the world. I am redeemed. I, I, God did something so dynamic and so powerful in our lives at, at our salvation. You've got to understand that. Behold the Lamb of God. The cross, the cross, our redemption, so powerful. I've got to understand redemption. I'm redeemed, hallelujah. I've been totally transformed. The blood of bulls and goats could only cover sin, but the blood of Jesus dealt with sin, amen, once and for all. Over, finishes. It took it as far as the east is from the west, north from the south. You know, the greatest problem is that we get before God and we remind Him of our sins. Am I the only person like that? Remind Him of our weaknesses. Remind Him. And He says, hey, I, I, can't re I, well, I don't know what you're talking about because they've been taken away. They've been removed. They've been thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. They're gone. They're, they're over. They're finished. Hallelujah. There's something that you've got to understand about yourself now. You're a brand new person. At the cross, I was redeemed. Jesus dealt with our sin. He took it away. Our, our redemption has to be as real to us as the sun rises every morning. It was interesting this morning because when I got up, I couldn't see the sun. But somehow or other, I didn't walk around and say, Oh, God, what happened to the sun? Oh, God. Somebody stole the sun. I can't see it. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Just because you have an experience, it doesn't mean that it's not real. I couldn't find the sun this morning, but I never got up saying, wonder where it is, who stole the sun? No, I knew that it was up there, amen. I, I know it's up there and I know I'm going to see it again. <laughs> Do you believe that today? <laughs> going to see it again. What an amazing thing. It's got to become as real to us as in the storms. Ephesians 1 7 says this In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made towards, abound towards us, which he made abound towards us. In him we have redemption through his blood. In him we have redemption through his blood. Redemption has made me a new man. If I can understand the outworking of something, I've seen people there that get a, a, a bit of wood and they make it into something beautiful. They get a bit of clay and they make it into a beautiful pot. But you see, redemption took this old, filthy old sinner and made me a brand new man, a new creation. Can I, can I even say it like this? I'm a new species. You and I are new species. We're brand new species. An absolute master of sin, Satan and demons. But see, if I don't live like that, if I don't understand that, I'll allow the enemy to triumph over me. See, I've received eternal life. I've received freedom. You see... What we've got to do is, as you read the Word, as you listen to somebody preach or whatever it is and they're talking about something, you've got to, you've got to take what they're saying and take it like an, like an orange off a tree or, or a peach or something like that and you take it uh, when you hear it and you take it and you bring it to yourself and you start to partake of it and you start to say within yourself, even though the enemy's 
triumphing over you, even though the enemy is having a field day over you, you start to stir up something on the inside and you start to say, I'm free. I am free. I am free. I am free. I, I know what it's like to go through hell. I know what it's like. But don't park there. Go through. <laughs> don't stop there. Don't allow the enemy to destroy your hope and your future. We've got to start to say within ourselves, I'm free, I'm free. Start to confess it. You see, you don't have to convince me, you've just got to convince yourself. You've got to, we've got to convince ourselves. John 8, 36 says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. You shall be free indeed. I know you know this. I'm just reminding you so that we start to stir again, stir again. Start to say, I'm free, I'm free. If the sun sets me free, then I'm free indeed. When the, you see, when the reality of being a new creation, a new species hits us, we will talk and act differently. We will talk and act differently. How many people believe that that's something that God could work with? If our talk is us negative, we'll fail, and God can't work with that. God said this, he said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father is in heaven. But if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father is in heaven. The reality of being a new creation, a new species, hits us, we talk and act differently. The Holy Spirit was poured out for a reason. Just didn't pour out the Holy Spirit so we could talk in tongues. So we could join the Tongue Talkers Club. He came to empower us. Empower us with the Holy Spirit. It was poured out with a purpose. That's, that's why it says in, in, in Acts 2.38, it says, Repent and be baptized and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You'll receive the power to live this new creation life. We need to be filled with the mighty Holy Spirit. Water baptism, let's look at that for a little minute. It says we, we crucified the old nature and received a new divine nature. You receive a new nature, a divine nature, the nature of God. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. Man, I used to sing that way, way back in the Methodist church, and I was on my way to hell. I wasn't saved, I hadn't committed my life to Jesus, but I sang the songs. I went along to, to, to be with Nancy because she wanted to go to church, so I went to church with her. And we'd sing these songs, I'm a new creation, I'm a brand, and I'd look and I'd, I'd sing them, but I, it had meant nothing to me. I'm a brand new man, all things have passed away. I've been born again, but today I know what it means. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Amen. All things have passed away. So You see, salvation's not just been forgiven of all of our sins. But it's the impartation. Let me say this. The impartation of a whole new nature. I, I you know, see, I, one day there I walked out the front and I gave my life to Jesus. I asked Jesus to come into my life. Though I could not see it in the natural, though I didn't understand, but something so dynamic and so powerful was happening in the realm of the Spirit that it confounds the wise man. And somehow or other, God took that, that, that heap of rubbish and heap of junk, whatever it might be, that was on its way to heaven and the old nature, that sin nature that was inside of me, somehow or other he grabbed it by the throat and dragged it out of me, and, and he poured a brand new nature into me. I, I can't explain it any closer than that. But you see, I'm not the old Neil, I'm a new Neil. I'm a new species, I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away, I've been born again. I, in, in water baptism, I went under, I, I identified with death. The old man died. It's an, impart, it's an impartation of a whole new nature. Did anybody ever say to you when you got saved, you've changed? 
you're different? Anybody ever say that to you? See, it's not just joining the church or getting religion. It's becoming a, a brand new creation, a child of God, a partaker of that divine nature. It's not just forgiveness of sins, although that in itself is amazing. That in itself is amazing, but it's the impartation of a new nature. The old self was crucified with Christ when I accepted Jesus as Lord of my life. God imparted his own nature. I got born again, a new species over which Satan has no dominion. Only the power of suggestion remains. Only the power of suggestion. Let us be conscious of God and not sin conscious. Let us, be, let us forgive and let us walk in that. Walk in the freedom, the liberty, God through Jesus has won for us. Amen? Walk in that, in that freedom. It's good to be free. Amen? What he won for it. He who the Lord sets free is what? Free indeed. This morning, I don't know where, where we're at, but I, I just want to, I know that myself, I, when, I'm, when I'm preparing this, I, I encourage myself in the Lord. I encourage myself. I, I, I start to get a fresh vision. I start to get a fresh, fresh understanding of who I am. I begin to stir myself. I begin to say, I, I choose life. I choose, I choose freedom. I, I choose peace. I'm not going to allow. Yeah, they come. Uh, look, friend, some of the stuff that, that, uh, that we've been through recently could crush me. But I've got to rise up above it. I've got to say, God, I choose life. I've, I've got to encourage myself in God. I've got to understand I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. And stir myself, hallelujah. I thank God Joe is stirring himself over there. I praise God that others in this place will stir themselves. Are you, are you thirsty today? Are, are you hungry for a move of God? Amen. Uh, well, it's no good just praying, God, will you do this, do that? He says, no, you go out and do it. Stir yourself. Amen. Stir yourself. Get <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, see. <sighs> My girl, I, I tell you what, God, God, God is about to move oh, just powerfully in your life. Powerfully in your life. Powerfully in your life. I tell you what, he's heard a cry that's been coming out of you just for a, small, for a season there. There's a cry that's been coming out from you. And I want to tell you, he's about to answer it. You, you've looked at it and you thought, God, this is silly. It's not happening. It's not working. But I want to tell you, it's going to work, amen. It's going to work. If, if you can remain thirsty, if you can remain hungry, if you don't let negativity, if you don't let hurt, if you just say, I choose, I choose this morning to dare to believe God. I 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 know, sir, that you've had some trouble recently, but I want to tell you, God's about to raise you up. God's about to put a voice on the inside of you. I know you've stood back. I know you've hung back. I know you've, 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 you've sort of gone there. But I want to tell you, God is going to do some great things in your life. He's going to raise you up. Amen. Sir, I just see a mantle that's coming upon your life. And you're going to be able to witness to those guys that you play football with. They're, you're going to, they're going to see something in you. They're going to come and start to inquire. Don't hold back. Don't hold back your tongue thinking that they'll think something lesser of you. You speak your word with boldness, with authority. Because I want to tell you, I believe that God's going to raise you up. You're an ambassador for him. You're not there just to play footy. That's just a bag of wind. But I want to tell you, you've got more than a bag of wind. You've got, a, you've got the mighty Holy Ghost on the inside of you, sir. And he's going to raise you up. He's going to cause your words to become powerful. You're powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. you believe that this morning? It's the anointing. It's the anointing. How many people want to rise up? Come on, let's rise. As you stand to your feet, say, I'm going to rise. I will rise. I will rise up. I will rise up. I will rise up. I will be the man. I will be the woman that God wants me to be. I will be that one. I will be that one. I will be that one. I will, I will be that one. I will be, be that one. Hallelujah. 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 
I want to just say this in, in, in passing. I, I believe that a lot of people with, with uh, masks and things like that, I believe it's a good thing when people wear a mask, especially if they've got the flu, if they've got something there that, they, that they're worried about or if they're concerned about, and I honour that, okay? Please, if you want to wear a mask, if, I'm not being rude about that. You, you wear a mask, and, 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 if, and if you feel you've got a cold or a flu, it's wise not to, not to do it. I know a lot of people, because they think they've got a flu and they, they don't come to church, they stay home. But you put a mask on or something like that, don't let, don't let anything stop you from fellowship, amen? But right now, I've said that because I wanted to say that, but right now, can I just also say, if you want to rise up, if, you, if, you want to, if you're thirsty for a move of God, if, if you want to shake off the, the, the stuff, I, I tell you what, I've had to shake off some stuff over the last few weeks. I have had to shake off some stuff. I have to shake off some stuff. If you want to shake off some stuff, <laughs> amen, that it won't settle on you, that it won't push you down. Won't, won't. Is there any, have you ever walked through a mud heap and your shoes built, filled up with mud, filled up with mud, and you're walking like this because they're so heavy? Man, you've got to take those shoes off because it's all full of mud, amen? It's, it's heavy. That, sometimes our walk with God can be like that because we've picked up so much junk walking through the mud of life, walking through whatever it is. You know, my old dog, he, every now and then stands up and has a good old shake. I, I feel like getting beside it and having a shake too, amen? Anybody here feel like you're having a shake? Come on, come on, if you feel like shaking off some stuff, shaking off some stuff. I'm not manifesting devils, by the way. <laughs> you want to shake off some stuff. Come on, come out the front here and let's, let's pray. Let's believe God with you. Let's believe God with you. Come on. Come on, we don't need any music. If you want to come, you can come. Hallelujah. Well, I'm here. Chokabundi. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shake off some stuff. I love the way the young people are open. They want the Holy Ghost. They want, come on, guys. Come on, people. Come on. You've you got some stuff here. You've got some stuff you need to shake off. Shake off those heavy loads. 